following the footsteps of Fugazi, Canadian uh, trio No Means No are back over in the UK for their third tour, wrote to their new LP, Greed. I interviewed just before they played the Boston Arms at the tail end of their tour. Actually, what the beginnings of this band was a TIAC four-track uh, tape recorder. Yeah. I, I worked a whole uh, year in uh, Calgary, uh, Alberta. Yeah. I had a dishwasher's job and I got a bunch of money put together and uh, never played music. I had an acoustic guitar I plunked on when no one was listening. Um, and, and this idea of this multi-track recorder intrigued me. This was before they had the compact things and it was a big uh, deal. So you were like a big music fan? I was a huge record yeah. collector, that kind of thing, you know, yeah. a, a record worm. Um, uh, and I bought this tape recorder and brought it home to my brother who was in in high school and playing drums in the school band and he played piano and had some jazz piano lessons. I said, well, I got this tape recorder, let's make some music. So we started uh, very simply with two mics uh, in our living room with a piano and an acoustic guitar and a drum set making yeah. music, which was atrocious music, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh, uh, we, uh, we then uh, got into the, a little bit of a bar band just to find out what it was like to play live. And we bought a bunch of equipment and started to make serious recordings, as serious as you can get with a four track. And we actually put out a couple of records, uh, seven inches uh, from was the Was that with stuff. a full band lineup? Or uh, no, it was just probably, us yeah. two. I'd play yeah. guitar and bass, and that's how I learned to play bass. I never started out as a bass player, I never had any yeah. intention. It's just to, to get a four piece rock thing happening with overdubs, I had to play the bass. He played piano and drums. We both sang. And um, the bass just sort of took over. And we made a decision after doing a couple of records that we had to play live, but we didn't want a band because we argued enough between ourselves. We didn't need another person to have his opinion yeah. and stuffing in the place. So, uh, and at that point, things like Pill were happening, and 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 the and the sort of the initial punk thing had, had uh, was splintering into all sorts of different people were just doing whatever they wanted. It was going wild, right? Getting yeah. before and stuff, and people were changing up the music quite a bit. So we decided, well, let's just do bass, drums, and vocals, a two-piece with vocals. <laughs> Do you see yourself part of that early 80s, more experimental version of the punk scene? Oh, uh, well, yeah, we're definitely the old guard, especially back where we come from. We're a little bit of a new thing here because uh, it took us a long while. We, we, were, we were an old band before we got over here. Yeah. Um, but we've never been part of any real milieu except the fact that the hardcore audience was the one that liked us and came out to see our shows. <laughs> Politics begins with you and me. Yeah. Politics is the way I treat you and you treat me, uh, multiplied by a, bill a billion times. But it does start there. I mean, the, the hatreds and the, uh, and, and, and the mistrust that exist in the world come out of hatreds and mistrust between people uh, because they speak a different language, have a different culture, have a different idea of what's right and wrong, a uh, different religion. Um, but all those differences happen on a personal level, basically. That's their genesis. We yeah. have a song called Dad, which is a, one of our most popular songs, frighteningly enough. It's about child abuse. It's about a, a kid is afraid to go home, and when he does, he's beaten by his father, his mother is beaten, his sister is raped. Uh, sounds really extreme, doesn't it? It's a very common, <laughs> let me tell you, very common. A lot of people come to say, that's my life. We do a song like Dad, a lot of people are just up there moshing like crazy, and we're wondering, you know, is the message getting across? And a lot of the energy and the anger and the violence in that song comes through the delivery of it. We're yeah. all men in this band. Yeah. And uh, perhaps I could write that song even though I don't have uh, a history of, of abuse. My dad was a sweetheart and I never abused me at all. Uh, it's because I have within me the, that victim and that victimizer as well, as most men do. Yeah. Um, that's a problem, but I think it's a problem we try uh, uh, very singularly among rock bands to deal with. If the one thing this music is not about, it's not about a celebration of the male penis. Yeah. This is not cock rock. It's not. Uh, it's it's not. Uh, oh, oh wow! Here we are, stud time. You know, uh, this music has always had a firm uh, and and very feeling commitment to the idea that there is another sector of humanity, which has its cultural uh, uh, residue. It's its cultural uh, sort of uh, the thing it holds within it that the male doesn't have, which is intimacy, caring, and that's the woman side of the equation. <laughs> What do people, what's people say to you after gigs and things? Thrashing, dude. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> or, uh, so I people, really like that one. It reminded me of King so, Crimson. Uh, <laughs> so, so people still take them quite a straight, straight head level then? Uh, yes, but, but uh, a lot I think if you don't uh, underestimate your audience, you'll find there's a lot of intelligent people out there who... <laughs> who uh, I had somebody say, say to me that uh, the other night in Manchester that um, everyone was into acid house music and feeling good, and he said, there's nothing wrong with feeling good, but you guys seem to make music for the right reasons, and that makes me feel good. 
Yeah. And that to me is, that's, that's the kind of person we want to play to and we want to be in our audience and that's the kind of goal we're trying to reach. We want to make people uh, feel good for the right reasons, which are because they are being human beings, being honest, being uh, uh, open uh, in a certain environment in, in, in the context of music and well, like having a good time. and celebration of life. Yeah, uh, you know, not to put too much into it. I mean, it is a sweaty rock show with a bunch of drunken <laughs> hooligans, let's face it. But uh, yes, there is that element, and if that element wasn't there, we wouldn't be doing it. I thought I would always 